Most Reverend Julian Liao Bang Kim, a graduate of the Pontifical Gregorian University in Rome, was ordained and installed as the fourth Archbishop of the Metropolitan Archdiocese of Kuala Lumpur in 2014. Ordained as a priest in 2002, Reverend Father Julian was a professor and formator at the College General Major Seminary in Penang before his episcopacy. With his episcopal motto, Integrity and Tenderness, the Archbishop is passionate about his ecumenical and interreligious dialogues. Archbishop Julian holds the chair of the Christian Federation of Malaysia and is also the Deputy President of the Malaysian Consultative Council of Buddhism, Christianity, Hinduism, Sikhism, and Toyism. Archbishop Julian, who is President of the Catholic Bishops' Conference of Malaysia, also heads the Regional Episcopal Commission for the Malaysian Catholic Education Council. I come from a family of four. I'm the second. I've got an elder sister. Then it's me, a younger sister, a younger brother. Uh, my parents are still with me. And my childhood, I could say, was a very happy childhood. And I was an altar boy, also serving in church in my primary school. And up to a time when if you grew too tall, taller than the priest, you have to stop serving. Anyway, it was uh, those early days uh, with religious sisters and uh, priests that we hang around with that somehow instilled that presence of God in us and uh, meeting uh, people of different faiths also. I feel has contributed to where I am today. I guess it's this atmosphere of uh, Catholicism that I was brought up in and gave me a strong foundation in my, in my upbringing. The first time I heard the call probably was after my O-levels waiting for results. We have a lot of time on our hands. And uh, I think that was the time I started uh, asking myself, what, what is God asking me to do? And uh, one of the areas that I felt I should search, not the usual, I want to be a lawyer, I want to be a doctor, I want to be an engineer, I want to be a teacher, but why not want to be a priest and uh, that started me looking and uh, researching a bit and uh, writing to different congregations to get information. So that started, uh, you can say, the search as to what are the different vocations available. For my parents, uh, being Chinese, uh, I guess they would like to see many grandchildren so they were a bit disappointed. I think that is uh, to be expected. Um, but um, eventually, they, they, my mum my mom said, uh, if this is what makes you happy, I will support you. I will be behind you. Uh, my father took a little bit longer. He was obviously in the beginning uh, did not expect this from, from the eldest son. And uh, he tried to dissuade me and tried to make me think of my decision, uh, telling me it's a difficult life, it is a challenging life. But uh, after a couple of years in the seminary, after seeing that I was serious and I was uh, resolute in this, in this calling, he gave his full support and uh, today I would say he's the greatest advertiser, I guess, of the Archbishop. Well, I would say it's been an exciting journey. Uh, it's not even three years yet uh, that I'm an Arch the Archbishop. 
And I would say there has never been a dull moment um, compared to where I was before the announcement. I was just a formator in the seminary with just a few students, a handful of seminarians. Today, I have the archdiocese, the clergy, the religious, my responsibilities are also with the interreligious uh, groups, the ecumenical group uh, with the different Christians. And uh, I look at every challenge, every obstacle as opportunities for us to, to, to stretch ourselves and to see how we can play uh, the role that I'm still discovering why I'm in this position. And wherever I go, uh, in the churches, in the parishes, they always tell me, Bishop, we are praying for you. And I believe that it is those prayers that have sustained me all these short years that I'm the Archbishop. But even before that, as a priest, when we pray for um, certain, certain purposes, for certain people, and, and you see the results, that's prayer answered. But at the same time, even when we don't see results, or we feel the pressure is even greater, uh, challenges are even more in spite of prayer, that is also prayer answered, I believe. Uh, maybe to test our faith, to test our resolve, to test our courage, uh, so prayers, answered, unanswered, that is according to our, our perspective. But from God's perspective, all prayers are answered. And sometimes it is wait. Sometimes it is not now. So to wait patiently, uh, I guess that's why we have Advent, time of waiting, and uh, to, to teach us to, to wait and to be patient and I think this increases our faith that we don't depend on ourselves but it is God's timing, it is God's will. One incident that I felt especially when alone and when uh, helpless I remember being sent to a parish where I was struggling with the language and I felt, I remember that incident in the, in the little chapel. I was praying and I was asking God, you know, uh, what am I doing here? How do I get through this time, this period, being so helpless, being so inadequate, especially in communicating in, in a different language. and, uh, and at that moment, I felt that God was telling me, do not be afraid, I am with you. Um, even though I did not see any burning bush, I did not see any extraordinary uh, experience, but just being embraced by God's love and His presence, um, I think for me, those are moments that, uh, that we need to be sensitive of and not to look for extraordinary uh, experiences. But every day, there are many experiences, God experiences, if we are only sensitive to, to notice. I guess once the seed is planted, once the fire is lit, it takes its own life. I feel that uh, they have contributed as far as renewing the faith of our people. I think for, for a while, the faith can sometimes be stagnant, can sometimes be cold. Our faith can sometimes uh, lose its, its, its uh, fire. And I believe the CCR, the Catholic Charismatic Renewal, has brought, has reignited this flame um, at various degrees in different places. 
but uh, in general, I believe that uh, they have helped the church to, to be on fire with their different youth groups, with their, their different activities, their retreats, their involvement in the parish, in different ministries. I think that is important that they, um, instead of just being an elite group doing things on their own, they become part of the parish, they get involved in all areas of the parish. I guess these are the gifts uh, that has been given to the church and it's up to us now to, to take it forward. Um, and different results happen in different places. So, uh, so in general, uh, I believe the CCR uh, can and must uh, renew itself. So it's not just uh, celebrating or sitting on our laurels, but to re-examine where we are, where we have been, and where we want to go forward and how we are to make changes. Uh, and, 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 and I guess the renewal also needs to be renewed from time to time so that fresh shoots will come forth, bloom, the blooming of, of, of flowers will, will come forth when we ourselves uh, can renew ourselves. Renewal means looking at yourself and asking, am I the same? Have I been this way for the last 10 years, 20 years, 30 years? You may have grown bigger or more prosperous. You may have changed physically, but for me, renewal is a renewal of, of course, the mind first. Am I able to accept others or am I still very uh, narrow-minded in my thinking? Here I do not mean being, being loose in our morality and accepting everything under the sun, but am I able to expand my, my, my mind uh, to, as I said, to accept differences to accept that there are people who, who are different from us in our faith, in our understanding of the world, in our orientations, and not just renewal of the mind, it must start with the mind, because a renewal of the mind then can initiate a renewal in our behaviour. And I think that is important. We need to also renew how we do things, how we see things. And once the mind is able to accept, then our behaviour will be easier to, to, to carry out. So, a renewal of not just the mind, not just uh, the way we do things, but also a renewal of the heart. Am I more compassionate? Am I more loving? Am I more forgiving or am I still having this hardness of heart and uh, a renewal of our whole being uh, oriented towards God? So for me, renewal is, is, is all, those, all those things. Everybody wants their child to do best, do their best, and to be the best. But let us not forget, uh, my advice to parents is also not just academic excellence, but they should also build up their spiritual uh, storehouse of their children. That uh, what they study in school for exams, they will forget probably the next day after the exams. But spiritual nourishment, the deepening of their faith will carry them throughout their lives. So to parents, not to neglect sending your children for, 
for faith formation, for religious classes, so that they will be uh, excellent in their studies and also equipped in their faith life. Um, but besides just catechism classes, I think it is important to expose our kids to the realities, especially the social realities where they grow up. To do social work, to, to reach out to the, to the less fortunate, so that they realise how lucky, how fortunate they are. To our young people uh, out there, not just in Malaysia, I guess, in, around the world, um, firstly, enjoy your youth, enjoy your growing up as young people. Do not grow up too fast that you miss your, your youth, but enjoy it in the sense of discovering your faith, discovering the love of God for you, and to know that God is always there for you, that um, you are never alone, there are people who care for you, you have all the idealism in the world. Do not let the adults tell you that you must change those ideals to fit the adults' uh, frame of mind. But I hope that you young people will challenge the adults, challenge the world and bring forth new life and bring forth new hope to the world. To all of the viewers of Shalom TV throughout the world, I want to encourage you not only to support this amazing media apostolate, but to spread the word to others. We all know how the internet and mass media are polluting the world with the poison of pornography and so much other forms of materialism. This is the source of eternal life, the gospel, and Shalom TV is consecrated to spreading the word of Christ. Thank you. Shalom World, God's own channel.